time to play with one of the most horrendously destructive guns in the whole game of Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to War Specs Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we'll be going through another Codex Orcs datasheet and we'll be looking at the big mech with the shock attack gun. This guy was somewhat underwhelming in the indexes, but coupled with our excellent Orc Codex and the relic from the Vigilist Detachment Dreadwar, this is a legitimate scary threat on the tabletop and there's very few things that aren't scared of having snotlings suddenly randomly burst out of their head. In this video we'll take a look at the datasheet of the shock attack gun any obvious buff synergies and combos that we can use on the table, and how I would use it in games of 40k. In the background, the shock attack gun is one of the most bizarre weapons that the orcs go to battle with, and really exemplifies how orcs like to harness any sort of technology to make weapons of war. The shock attack guns project a narrow force field through the realm of the warp itself, beginning at the barrel of the gun, and ending roughly where the gun is aimed. The portals look like spinning black holes, and it's possible for living creatures to travel through the warp, through the tunnel, and emerging at the exit point. Though usually this unstable force field maintains its integrity, even a few seconds of exposure to the realm of the warp can drive the individual absolutely insane. As unintelligent as orcs are, very few would be stupid enough to be fired from a shock attack gun, Gretchen have the brains to avoid it, so the big mechs turn to the most diminutive greenskins, the snotlings, to be fired through the gun. The big mech often aims the gun so the snotlings will emerge directly within tanks or within the very bodies or armour of their targets where they will rip and tear anything apart as they've been driven mad through the warp. Being such a complex piece of kit maintained by orcs, the thing is often prone to misfire or fail, sometimes exploding and spinning out of control, sometimes making the portal a bit too big, so instead of firing the snotlings through, some sentient warp stuff gushes through the hole into real space, obliterating anything in its path. This really isn't a gun that you want to get in the way of. So on the tabletop then, the shock attack gun is fielded in the hands of a big mech, and they're an HQ choice for Codex Orcs that cost 80 points to field. The big mech's profile is pretty typical of a non-war boss hero, movement 5, weapon skill 3, ballistic skill 5, strength 5, toughness 4, wounds 4, attacks 3, leadership 7, and a 4 plus save. He also has stick bombs, as well as his eponymous shock attack gun. The gun itself is, as you'd expect, a highly random weapon, it has a very good 60 inch range, meaning that you can put this guy a long way back, and that should mean that the enemy won't be able to target him, as hopefully he'll be screened by other units. It's a heavy d6 weapon, with a strength 2d6, AP of minus 5, so we'll go through any conventional armour, and the target will need inball saves to protect it, damage of d6, and if you do get lucky with the strength roll, and roll an 11 or 12, then it means that the target suffers d3 mortal wounds, in addition to any damage that the shock attack gun would do. So the weapon is incredibly random, it has a couple of failure points in that you could roll a 1 for the number of shots, or a very low strength, like strength 2 or 3 or something like that, which means that it has a higher probability of most than doing absolutely nothing. However, it counterbalances that by being able to roll incredibly highly as well. Say if you roll 6 shots with a strength of 12 and get lucky with the damage rolls, theoretically this thing could be doing around 36 wounds to its target in a single round of shooting, and that's not even accounting for daka daka daka. It means that both the number of shots with heavy d6 and the strength are really good ways that you could use command points to get flat more shooting out of the gun, particularly if the strength is close to a crucial bracket for your targets. Say you roll a 6 and a 1, and you need to be above strength 8, it could be well worth re-rolling that 1, so you're wounding on 3s rather than 5s, and this could get a lot more efficiency out of the gun. Now because of all these random variables, it is quite hard to calculate the average damage out of the gun, and it really does depend a fair bit on targets. The variable strength means it's a lot more efficient against low toughness targets. Things like Space Marine Aggressors and Centurions are pretty much its ideal prey, with multi-wounds, high armor save, but low toughness. On average it does around 2.5 wounds to your standard toughness 7 vehicle, so it's got a pretty reasonable average damage output, but as we said this can vary a lot, it will often be zero, but it will often be far higher. To be honest, it's not bad damage output for 80 points, but it's not absolutely overwhelming either. The main advantages come when you get into all the buffs, which we'll talk about in a second. In terms of options, the big mech can also be accompanied by a Grot Oiler. He's 4 points, and he basically allows the big mech to repair vehicles by one additional wound on one turn when he uses the big mechaniac rule. In reality, I think that the Grot Oiler's best value is actually to be a little bit of extra toughness for the big mech, as it means, say, if he gets sniped by a very nasty sniper bullet, then the Grot Oiler can just eat that bullet first, and you've essentially saved your big mech taking some wounds for just an investment of 4 points. If you do have a few points left over in an orc list, I'd highly suggest taking these guys. They certainly won't come into play every single game, but if they ever do save a shock attack gun's life, then they've earned back their value many times over. 
In terms of special rules, he has Here We Go for the standard charges, and Daka 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 for those extra shots on sixes, which I did count in the previous maths. As a big mech, he can, as we mentioned, repair vehicles. If there's a clan vehicle within 3 inches of him, then he can regain D3 lost wounds on it at the end of the movement phase. So if he did have him standing next to some sort of shooty tanks as well, then he can repair some vehicles while also frying the enemy from range. Overall, the shock attack gun is a moderately dangerous anti-tank and anti-elite weapon. It can be really annoying to remove due to it being a character and be able to fire all game long because of this. And it can be very swingy with the damage output, frequently getting nothing or frequently getting loads. So let's talk about the different ways that we can add more to this damage output. There are quite a few good ones. First of all, we have clan choice for the big mech. And for me, the absolute standout one here is death skulls. Death skull units get to re-roll a hit roll, a wound roll, and a damage roll. And for shock attack guns, this provides an absolutely enormous buff to the amount of firepower that comes out of it. It has a relatively low number of shots comparatively. With a ballistic skull 5, you're almost always going to be missing at least once, so you'll typically get that re-roll. The strength can be a bit variable, so you'll often be re-rolling that. And being able to re-roll any low rolls of damage is absolutely stellar as well. It's basically like Space Marine Salamanders plus one. The maths of this gets very complicated very quickly. Just from my rough estimate, it shows that the gun gets something around a 50% damage increase, purely for having this culture, because those rerolls are just so valuable when they're applied one after the other. In my opinion, death skulls really are the premier choice for shock attack guns, and it can be quite easy to include them as well. You could just include a death skull shock attack gun battery in your army, take two or three of them as HQ choices, and just take some grots in the battalion to fill it out. On top of that, Death Skulls also get you a 6 plus invul save, allow you to count as objective secured, and get access to the Wrecker's Strastium, which allows you to reroll wound rolls, and adds a ton more reliability there. Bad Moons are of course another decent option for shooter units, getting reroll ones to hit is more like a 17% damage increase, so it's nowhere near as strong on these guys, but you also get access to their Shoot Twice Strastium, which if you aren't using the Dreadwire Strastium, as we'll talk about in a second, can be another really good benefit. Freebooters are also a decent shooty clan. If you can get one of your friendly units to shoot a unit's death in the shooting phase, that means that they can all be hitting on fours, which means that they could be pretty similar to death scores, but it does require some setup, and you're not going to be able to do it all the time, which makes me not quite as much a fan of it. For me, the other clans don't add quite as much, though obviously a little bit of survivability or damage output in close combat never goes amiss. Probably the most important way that you can upgrade a shock attack gun in your army is using the Dreadwire Specialist Attachment from the Vigilist book. For just one command point, you can upgrade a detachment to be a Dreadwar, and you do this to access an excellent relic and stratagem for a shock attack gun big mech. The relic is Da Souped Up Shocker, which has exactly the same profile as a regular shock attack gun, but instead of having d6 damage, it has 2d6 damage, so this flat doubles the amount of damage coming out of the gun. You also get access to the excellent custom ammo stratagem. This one's two command points, and you basically pick a Dreadwire unit from your army, and this unit can shoot twice this shooting phase with all of its ranged weapons. So this just lets you double up on the already doubled shock attack gun firepower, meaning that provided you've bought this relic in, and you're happy to spend two command points a turn, your regular shock attack gun can be firing with the power of four shock attack guns. That's really not to be taken lightly, if we did say that it's around about two and a half wounds on a vehicle. On a regular shock attack gun with no upgrades or rerolls, that means that we'll be on average just about killing one vehicle a turn with this thing, and potentially much more if we stack some other buffs on it, or use things like death score rerolls. The big mech with this relic and shock attack gun is one of the strongest orc units that we have in our entire arsenal right now. In terms of warlord traits that we can use to get more out of him, then big killer boss is one of the best. This is the one where you add plus one to the wound roll for any of your warlord's attacks that target a vehicle or monster unit. This really helps out with the random strength of the gun. Even if you roll snake eyes and you're targeting a vehicle or monster, you'll still be wounding on fives at the very least. And if you roll high, then you could easily be wounding on twos. I think that this one's likely the best of the warlord traits, and it could be a very good target for actually making your warlord this guy, as he's likely to be sat safe at the back of your lines, rather than charging forward and breaking heads like some war bosses might be. Again, on top of having essentially a quad firing shock attack gun, it means that that shock attack gun will be even more lethal against most vehicle targets. Again, this equates to something between a 20 and 50% damage increase, depending on what sort of strength you roll. In terms of synergy with other orc units, things like pain boys or custom force field mechs will make him that bit tougher, though hopefully he's not going to be shot at in the first place unless your opponent has long range sniper fire, and pain boys could also heal him a bit with the medisquig. We already mentioned that he has good synergy while sitting next to vehicles, so if you can deploy him next to any friendly orc firepower, then that could be a way of making your vehicle investment that little bit more efficient by getting it regenerating free with the mech that you wanted anyway due to this excellent gun. 
with the Orc Stratagems, we have even more options for making these deadly guns even more deadly. First of all, I think it's worth mentioning Grot Shields, which for 1 command points could protect your big mech against Starfire Fire, and seeing how much damage he can do, and how much potential output he has. If there are significant Starfires around, then keeping him absolutely safe behind the Grot Shields could actually be an excellent use of the Gretchen and of a command point for the game. If you can keep this guy alive, then turn after turn he will hoover up enemy armour, so stopping him from being dead could be very good for your battle plans. We already mentioned the Death Skull Stratagem Wreckers, this one's the 2 command point one that allows them to reroll wound rolls for things targeting enemy vehicles. This combined with Big Killer Boss really puts him through the roof in terms of reliability for wound rolls against a certain vehicle, and it becomes far more efficient if you are using custom ammo to fire it twice in the one shooting phase, as you get to take advantage of this for both rounds of shooting provided you're targeting vehicles. If you're playing Bad Moons on the other hand, then showing off can means that they can shoot again, that's another command point, and if you're willing to forego the Death Skull re-rolls for the Bad Moon once, you could actually have your souped up shocker firing 3 times in a single phase, that's 66 shock attack gun shots. In reality I'm a little bit uncertain as to whether this is actually worth passing up the Death Skull re-rolls for, and it does cost an extra 2 command points. I feel like I'd rather have the Death Skull ones firing twice than the Bad Moon ones firing 3 times, but if it works better for your detachments and you have the command points to field it, then it's really not the worst thing. Mordaka is an old favourite to get even more shots out of a gun. This is the one that gets your extra Daka hits on 5s rather than 6s, so you'll just be getting more shots out of the thing, and this is great if you have to move it, or even think about the jumping the big mech with a weird boy, and these extra Daka 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 hits will counter out the benefit of moving and shooting with heavy weapons. From the Saga of the Beast, they do have the stratagem The Cleverest Boss, which can add plus 1 to the big mech's wounds, attacks, and increase the weapon skill to 2+. plus. Could be something for trying to keep him a bit safer against sniper fire, but close combat isn't really where he wants to be. I'd usually pass this one up. Finally, and one I almost forgot about, is the Orcs is Never Beaten stratagem. This one costs 2 command points when the character is slain, and it allows you to shoot as if it were the shooting phase one last time before they go down. When you're potentially firing 2d6 shots worth of snotling death, this can very often be worth it, particularly if your big mech gets sniped at range. I'd try and aim for something in the opponent's army that hasn't shot or charged yet this turn. So how would I actually use these guys in game then? Firstly I would typically pay the extra couple of command points to take that souped up shocker along, and on that big mech I'd take a grot oiler to keep him a bit more protective against sniper fire. If I was taking him in a death scores detachment, I might consider taking along another couple of mechs with shock attack guns, so they could hopefully try and help clean up any targets that he half kills but doesn't quite finish off. I'd want to deploy him somewhere well screened from the enemy, if they don't have any snipers, then somewhere perched on the top of a very tall terrain piece somewhere inside your own deployment zone is absolutely ideal. That will give him good line of sight, and hopefully a lot of protection against charges, so he can sit at the top of this hill or ruin, blasting people all game long. If they do have snipers, then you're going to have to be a little bit more careful about things. If you can manage to out-deploy them, then it's going to be better than him being dead, or you could think about putting him next to some Gretchen, and use Grot Shields to keep him safe against them. He really is a model that you're going to be wanting to try and keep alive for as long as possible. From there it's pretty much pointing and deleting enemy vehicles and units as they present themselves, but I think there's still quite a lot of skill involved in engaging just how many stratagems and things to give him in any given turn. Typically I would be thinking about using custom ammo each turn, to get him more shots if it's needed as per the course of the game, but if you really wanted a massive turn 1 alpha strike, then you could soup that up with the Death Scores Wrecker's stratagem or Bad Moons showing off, and perhaps combine that with more Daka as well for even more hits. You can even do things like re-rolling strengths or a number of shots, which will overly further your investment. You could really pour all of your command points into this thing, and it will fairly reliably translate to dead vehicles, but you do have to bear in mind the opportunity cost of using those command points for other things, like fighting again in close combat, or using other great stratagems such as Endless Green Tide. If you can't get lines of sight to what you can see, don't be afraid to move, it's better still to be firing even if he's hitting on sixes, although you could potentially use more Daka to try and fix that. He's also a very viable target for the jump if you happen to have a weird boy nearby. It could potentially be a game winning move to jump him to a new line of sight and fry a very important enemy unit, even if it might cost him his life in the next turn. If it has the potential between winning and losing the game, then it could be a worthwhile gambit. So all maths aside, I thought to actually roll out a few dice rolls for this guy, just as it's so hard to calculate his damage output. I just rolled out 5 rounds of shooting of a Death Skulls big mech with big killer boss, firing at toughness 7 vehicles, and using the suit top shocker with the custom ammo strat to fire twice. I didn't bother with more Daka, and I didn't bother with the Wrecker's stratagem. I wound up getting 10 damage on the first set, 15 on the next, 11 on the next, then an absolutely stupidly crazy 39 on the following one, and then 13 on the following. 
so with a warlord trait, relic, and a few command points, you really can have an 80 point model, pretty happily one-shotting one enemy tank every single turn, and just occasionally he's going to absolutely obliterate whatever he's shooting at, even if it's some sort of super heavy titanic unit. It really can be a fun and very destructive addition to an orc army. So let me know what you think about the big mechs with shock attack guns, and if you've had any experience playing with or against them in game. It's good to see them as the very feared and scary thing they should be, and still suitably random that they can happily do nothing or destroy Imperial Knights in a single shot. Thanks very much for listening to another Orc Specs Tactics video. If you've enjoyed, then feel free to subscribe for more regular Orc content. And if you've been watching regularly, please consider supporting on the channel's Patreon page, as it's what does allow the channel to keep on making videos. There's a few other benefits of being a Patreon of the channel, such as seeing some videos early, regular polls on what sort of videos we want to see next, and the occasional prize draw where I post out some miniatures. If any of that sounds interesting, or you'd just like to help support the channel, then please take a look at the link in the description below. And of course, a big thank you to the current Patreons for making this channel possible. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you guys next time.